The Archimedean principle states that if A and B are real numbers and A is positive, then there must exist a natural number N such that N times that positive real number A is greater than B. We'll be proving this in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This principle should seem pretty obviously true, certainly for any number B, no matter how big B is, as long as A is positive, we can find a natural number big enough so that N times A will be bigger than B. Another way you could think of it is remember that N times A is basically just adding A to itself N times. For example, 3 times A is equal to A plus A plus A. So another way to think of this result is that if we have two real numbers, A and B, and A is positive, then we can add A to itself enough times to eventually surpass B. I think you'll agree that this is such an obvious fact that it's pretty cool we can actually prove it. So let's see how the proof goes. Quickly, we're going to reformulate what we're trying to prove, which will make the proof easier. Certainly, if n times a is greater than b, well, that's the same as saying that n is greater than b divided by a, just dividing both sides of this inequality by a, which we know we can do with no complications because a is positive. Now, what is b over a? Well, b over a is just a real number. Take care to note that it's not necessarily a rational number because A and B are not necessarily rational numbers. They're just real numbers, so their quotient is also a real number since, again, we know that A isn't zero. Note that we could write any real number in this way. Just for example, consider a real number X, set B equal to X, A equal to 1, and we would have X written in this form. In other words, we can simplify the problem to this. We want to prove that for any real number x, there exists some natural number greater than x. This means that the natural numbers are not bounded above by any real number. Once more, just to emphasize how proving this is the same as proving the original form, given real numbers a and b with a greater than zero, I can just set x equal to b over a, which is a real number, and so by this result that we're about to prove, we know there exists a natural number n greater than x, which is equal to b over a, so n is greater than b over a, and thus, of course, n times a is greater than b. So by proving this, we guarantee the original result as well. All right, no more dilly-dallying, let's get right into the proof. And we'll proceed by contradiction. We want to prove that for every real number x, there exists some greater natural number. So we'll assume for contradiction that there's some real number for which this doesn't hold, a real number that's greater than or equal to every natural number. So we say, suppose for contradiction, SFC, that there exists some real number x such that x is greater than or equal to n for every natural number n. Thus, the set of natural numbers is bounded above. Also, we of course know that the set of natural numbers is non-empty. Thus, by the completeness of the reals, often called the least upper bound property, since the natural numbers is a non-empty subset of the real numbers that's bounded above, we can conclude that it has a supremum. The supremum of the natural numbers exists, let's say it's equal to s. Then, if the supremum of the natural numbers is equal to s, what do we know about, say, s minus 1? Well, certainly, by definition of supremum, s is the least upper bound of the naturals. So if we reduce it by subtracting 1, this, s minus 1, is not an upper bound of the naturals. Hence, there must exist some natural number, say m, that is greater than s minus 1. Since m is greater than s minus 1, we can add 1 to both sides of the inequality to conclude that m plus 1 is greater than s. And this, my friends, is a contradiction. It's a contradiction because m is a natural number, 1 is also a natural number, and the natural numbers are closed under addition. So m plus 1 is also a natural number, but that means we've found a natural number greater than the supremum of the natural numbers, which contradicts the definition of the supremum being an upper bound. Hence, our assumption that there exists some real number that's greater than or equal to every natural number must be false. 
And thus, since there cannot exist a real number that's greater than or equal to every natural number, we know that for any real number, there must exist a greater natural number. So we have proven our desired result, and thus we have proven the Archimedean principle. Quick preview of why we care about this at all. Suppose we're given an epsilon greater than zero. We could set a equal to epsilon, b equal to one, and then divide both sides of this inequality by n, and we would have guaranteed the existence of a natural number n such that one over n is less than epsilon. In other words, for any positive real number epsilon, there exists a natural number whose reciprocal is less than epsilon. You may or may not already know why something like this will be very useful for us as we continue to study real analysis. If you don't know, you'll figure out soon. So I hope this video helped you understand the proof of the Archimedean principle. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.